This here is the all new iPad OS 14. Apple's approach towards the iPad OS has been a lot distinct when compared to the iOS. In fact, they persistently want to add a lot of features that can possibly someday be more functional and maybe replace your laptop. Anyways, if you're heading on to install the iPad OS 14, then these are the things that you can expect. Straight away, you might figure out that there are a lot of features that has been borrowed from Android, but I'm really happy that they've finally made its way to the iOS environment. Let me start with the widgets. One of the major differences between the iOS and this iPad OS update is that you wouldn't be able to throw these widgets wherever you want on the screen. Now, you will have to swipe all the way to the first screen to access the widget section. This is kind of a bummer when it comes to the iPad OS. And I did feel this as a major drawback because the idea of having a widget is to look at information at a glance on your home screen. And being not able to populate these widgets wherever I want, it kind of fails the purpose of having a widget. Although you can do every other thing like editing your widgets, interacting with them or stacking them up, you can also toggle the widget section on the first screen to either keep them or access them with a swipe from the settings menu. As a user experience designer, I always felt that the iPad OS is kind of iPhone's iOS scaled to a bigger screen. But finally, they have decided to redesign the stock apps to take full advantage of the bigger screen. Thus, straight away, we went from bottom navigation bar from the iPad OS 13 to the toggle sidebar. And that's one of the instant changes that you will recognize while opening your stock apps like photos, music or calendar. The idea of populating these functionalities in a toggle sidebar is to make sure that they're super easy to access. One of the other things that iOS missed out till now was to introduce a universal search or the one that we see as the spotlight on macOS. But here we are. You just have to swipe down to access the spotlight. Through this, you can search on the web or even skim through your installed apps. Very recently, one of my friends bought an Apple Pencil, but he's not an artist. So I rarely saw him use the Apple Pencil. Maybe for one or two days when he bought the first time. But finally, he can take the utmost advantage of using the Apple Pencil through this particular update. The Scribble is the coolest feature of the iPad OS 14. Now with the Apple Pencil, you can almost write or scribble anywhere in any text field across the iPad environment and the handwriting will instantly convert into a text. Also in the Notes app, you can just scribble or draw anything and use a smart selection tool so that you can simply select your handwritten notes and copy them across to any other app. And it just doesn't stop there. You can also hand draw any geometrical elements and instantly convert them into a perfectly shaped structure. It's more like the auto draw technology from Google, but this time much fluid and super easy to use. One of the cool thing about the scribble feature is that it also has data recognition. For example, if you have a dial number or an email address on your note, you can simply click on it to send an instant mail or to make an instant call. One other thing to talk about is the compact UI. Glad that finally Apple recognized that you can use floatable elements in order to showcase two distinct apps without having to switch between them. Now a FaceTime call or a normal call wouldn't take up your entire screen. Even though this is a pretty common feature in the Android world, I do like how they have utilized it for Siri. You can now interact with Siri without having to lose focus on the background, although you wouldn't be able to interact with your background, navigate between screens and also interact with Siri at the same time. Anyways, these are the cool features that you can expect from the iPadOS 14. And if you haven't updated yet, then I pretty much recommend you to do so. Seriously, look here. I'm running this on an iPad Air 2014 model and it's still pretty smooth. Either way, do share your views and thoughts on the comment section below. And if you have a friend who hasn't updated yet, then please do share this video.